Well, thank you all very much for coming. Uh, today, Senator Wel Welch and Congresswoman Ballant and I are very pleased to announce over $74 million in congressional designating spending for Vermont as part of the fiscal year 2024 appropriations process. Uh, more grant awards will be announced in the coming weeks as passes or some of the major appropriations bills has not yet been completed. So this is a partial announcement. Uh, what I like about the earmark process, which is what this is, is this is not top-down federal spending to the local communities. This is grassroots spending where people and communities all over the state come forward and they say, look, these are our needs. How can you help them? We go through a lengthy process to do just that. And we have heard from probably between all of us, hundreds of different organizations throughout the uh, state. Uh, the funding we are announcing today will address some of the most important needs in every corner of our state. It will address our health care crisis. It will expand senior centers and med meal sites. It will help build community uh, centers, fire stations, and improve water uh, safety. Uh, the legislation will also begin to address uh, the very serious housing crisis that exists in virtually every part of our state. And among other projects that we've worked on, uh, the funding will help the Lamoille Housing Partnership to renovate uh, space at the Vermont State University at Johnson to create more than 20 units of affordable housing for older Vermonters, as well as establish an on-site health clinic. Uh, this funding will help build affordable housing in Newport, uh, St. Albans, Arlington, Woodstock, Washington County, and elsewhere. It will also put money into mobile uh, home parks uh, to help them improve uh, their water situation. There's also funding for the Washington Electric Co-op to move more aggressively uh, to sustainable energy and solar energy. Uh, there is a money in this list for improving training for law enforcement officers and also to help deal with the recidivism rate, which is much too high in Vermont and the country. We are spending a lot of money keeping people in jail, but we don't provide the resources they need so that when they get out of jail, uh, they can become law-abiding uh, citizens. Uh, there is a project in here for the town of Rochester. Uh, they're going to receive $2.3 million to turn their vacant high school into a community uh, center, and that's a project uh, that is going to give new life to the old high school uh, by creating a true community space, putting a child care, adult day center, town offices, and local businesses all under one roof. But let me reiterate, the money that we're announcing today is not the complete amount of money. More money will be coming in. And in some of the projects that I have worked on, and Peter will talk about what he has done, uh, in some of the yet-to-be-announced projects, is $7 million for more federally qualified community health centers. That will be in Winooski, Morrisville, and uh, Richford. Uh, and this funding will uh, provide more access for not only primary health care, but for dental care as well. Uh, Senator Welch and I uh, worked together uh, to bring in $2 million for Southwestern Vermont Medical Center to launch a primary care physician training program. I think everybody knows we have a major crisis in primary health care in Vermont throughout the country. Among other things, we don't have enough primary care doctors. So Peter and I are working to see that we improve that. And there are many other projects as well. But uh, with that, let me introduce Senator Welch. She and I have worked uh, hard on these projects. Peter? Yeah. Um, thanks, Bernie. Uh, I just want to reiterate something that uh, Bernie said. Uh, this congressionally directed spending, th this is Vermont taxpayer dollars coming back to Vermont. And the decisions about how these are allocated is, as Bernie said, totally bottom up. It's local community leaders identifying what is a real need in their community and then having to go through a very rigorous process uh, for it to be uh, considered and evaluated and passed through the committee process and then get approved on the floor. On the floor. These are all public purpose uh, efforts that are helping our communities improve themselves. 
And a, a major point about this is who better than the people in the communities, uh, whether it's Rutland uh, or Burlington uh, or Bennington, to make judgments about what they really need. The second thing is that it's really tough on our property taxpayers right now here in Vermont. It's tough. Uh, school budgets are going up. And to the extent that we can help Bernie, Becca, and I by bringing some resources back to communities to do projects that are really essential, we think that is really, really important. Uh, the projects, uh, you've got the list of them, so I won't go all through them. Uh, but housing is a major issue. Uh, Champlain uh, 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 Housing Trust is getting $5 million uh, to help them in their work. Uh, Mount Anthony down uh, in Bennington is getting money that will help with 63 apartment units, also uh, some medical facility, and as Bernie mentioned, then also some retail. So it's about building up the community. There's infrastructure projects that are uh, really important to towns like Waterbury, like Berlin, uh, like Johnson. Uh, you know, that are going to be funded and really make a difference in the communities being able to have the infrastructure they need in a resilient one at that. Uh, one of the things that is small uh, compared to other, uh, <laughs> some of the projects that get considered is the Vermont Woodlands Association. And that organization helps landowners figure out and implement plans to preserve our forest. And that is so, so important always, but especially with what's happening with climate change. Um, the historical uh, tradition that we have here in Vermont, uh, respect for the legacy, we fund some historic projects like the one in Stratford, where the town offices are located in a building uh, that was donated to Stratford by Justin Morrill, who was a senator for, I think, 30 years and in the House of Representatives, uh, and is responsible for the Land Grant College Act, and also played a major role uh, in the Transcontinental Railroad. Uh, and this uh, grant is going to help that town preserve that building that was given to the town uh, well over 100 years ago uh, by an illustrious senator, uh, Justin Morrill. So we feel very good about how uh, the efforts that Vermonters made to make application to identify projects that make a difference in their communities and then have that uh, stand uh, rigorous process through the, uh, through the Congress. Uh, now they're going to start being able to do the work that the resources from these congressionally directed spending grants will provide. And uh, Bernie and Becca and I try to work very closely on these so that we're complementing rather than uh, overlapping, because uh, the goal that we have as a delegation is to do the absolute maximum that we can to benefit as many Vermonters and Vermont communities as we can. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Um, David Schur is the State Director for Congresswoman Bellin. Thank you, Senator. Um, I, I, unfortunately, Congresswoman Ballant was not able to be here in person today, but she did want me to read this statement on her behalf. I'm sorry I'm not able to be with you here today, but I'm so excited to join our senators to announce these community, project funding, pro these community funding projects for Vermont. This funding process is an opportunity for Vermont's elected representatives to make sure federal funding is directed toward helping our communities in places where it can have the greatest impact. I'm thrilled to have secured millions to invest directly in our communities across Vermont. The projects my office advanced span the length and breadth of the state from Bennington and Townsend in the south all the way up to North Hero and Canaan in the north. These investments will spur 15 different projects generating jobs and strengthening our community resources. They will address some of Vermont's most pressing issues, housing, the infrastructure needed to support housing, rural health care, climate resiliency, technological innovation, and education. I look forward to seeing these federal dollars put to work for Vermont families. I was proud to be able to advance a full roster of 15 projects through the House appropriations process and ultimately the full appropriations process, uh, the maximum number members of the House were permitted to put forward. And uh, I can provide, I won't go through the list of projects right now, but I can certainly provide that list of projects for, uh, for you after this. 
Finally, I want to thank Senator Sanders and Senator Welch. Their long-term leadership and their close working relationship with my office through this process has been invaluable, and I am grateful for their partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any questions on congressional uh, directed spending? Senator, as you know, they were banned for, for some time, yeah. and now they're back in yeah. part because of the work of Senator Leahy. What guardrails Well, not just Senator Leahy. I think all of us felt very strongly about this. And I'll, it's, it's a good question. The argument against them was people were saying, well, you know, you got a big deficit. Why are you spending more money? The answer is, we're not spending more money. What this funding is about is coming from the budgets of each agency already. It's not more spending. It's taking a tiny fraction, I think less than 1% of the total spending. And as Senator Welch mentioned, to my mind, I would go, I would go further. This is very important approach because what it does, rather than having the federal government determine what Winooski or Burlington or Bennington needs, we're hearing from the people themselves. What are their priorities? And so for a relatively small amount of money, we're addressing real community needs. So this is something I have always believed in, and not only do I, did I support bringing back uh, these earmarks, I would go uh, a lot further than uh, is currently the case. What, what kind of guardrails are there to prevent corruption? I know that's been one of the... Well, the there are a lot. Law. There are a lot. In other words, what you certainly don't want is somebody to come up with some uh, program that's going to benefit some powerful special interest. So there is a lot of uh, transparency uh, in these... Uh, in in this whole process. Yeah, by, and by the way, on that, we have to put our names on these. Every project uh, application to our office that we support, we put our name on. So you have the capacity to look at what that project is, who sponsored it, kick the tires, and come to your conclusions about the merits of that project. So the transparency that Bernie met, uh, mentioned, with our names on it, means we have to stand behind the proposal that we're making. Other questions on, uh, all right, I wanted if there are no other questions Just on. Just one other question. Um, the 15 projects you mentioned from Congresswoman Ballant's office, those have already been signed into law by President Biden as part of the first six. Yeah, so the, I won't go into all the details. Yeah. There's slightly different rules for the House and the Senate. Yeah. Um, the House projects had a narrower set of eligibility buckets, and because of that, uh, it is my belief that all 15 on the House side have gone through the full appropriations process. I can check that for you to confirm, but I believe that's the case. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me say a word on another subject, um, and I speak as the Chairman of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pension Committee. Uh, one of the focuses of the committee has been to lower the outrageously high cost of prescription drugs in this country, uh, where we find Americans paying, in some cases, 10 times more for the same exact drugs sold in Canada or in Europe. It's an issue we've spent a lot of time on. Uh, and one of the particular areas that we've looked at uh, is the very, very high cost of asthma uh, inhalers. Uh, asthma is a very serious problem impacting tens of millions of Americans, many, many thousands of Vermonters. And sometimes people are paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for the inhalers. And they're often sold abroad for 10 percent of that cost. Uh, in the last six weeks, uh, my committee has produced an investigation documenting uh, the very high prices that Americans are paying compared to what people are paying abroad. Uh, and I have in the last uh, three or four weeks spoken to the CEOs of every major uh, drug company uh, that manufactures these inhalers. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Behringer uh, Ingelheim, a German company, one of the major manufacturers, announced that they were lowering their prices uh, in America to uh, capping their prices at $35, a major, major reduction in price. Uh, and just this morning, I talked early this morning uh, to the CEO of AstraZeneca, which is one of the largest uh, drug companies in the world, uh, and they followed suit. They have also announced that they will be lowering their prices to $35. I think later in the week I will be speaking to the CEO of GlaxoSmithKline, uh, 
we don't know what they'll be doing, but I expect they will be also substantially lowering their prices, and there's another company out there called Teva, uh, and we'll be speaking to them as well. So at a time when so many people in Vermont uh, are struggling with the high cost of prescription drugs, uh, we have some good news, uh, and I'm proud that we're able to go forward and lower the cost of uh, these asthma and CPDOD uh, inhalers. That's great. Any questions on that? Okay, great. All right, well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Appreciate you being here.